Now over the past few days we have had kind of a very large tornado outbreak and this has included a lot of towns being hit, multiple wedge tornadoes in excess of a mile wide. And in Iowa, we even seen wind speeds in excess of 200 miles an hour on one of the tornadoes. Let's go ahead and get right into it. Ahead and get right into it. Now, everybody, thank you for tuning in to Skycast. I'm Christian. I'll be your host. And as I said just a few minutes ago, we had a large, deadly tornado outbreak and consistent of 100 plus tornadoes. I'm going to go ahead and show you that right and now. And as we're sitting here and we're looking at the storm reports over the past few days, this is from the 25th to the 30th. We have a ton of them all the way over here from portions of Wyoming and then all the way shot down from Texas, Louisiana, Arkansas, all the way up into portions of Iowa and Nebraska. You can see all these little red icons are those tornado reports. We have had multiple tornado reports anywhere from over here from the St. Paul area. Uh, there was a wedge tornado, big wedge tornado that touched down uh, in the Omaha area as well as a secondary wedge tornado in this general area. Uh, these two, this tornado in general, the one right here, did cause a tornado emergency. Uh, this one over here caused a secondary tornado emergency. Uh, as well as that, we had multiple tornadoes touch down over in this general area. Uh, and that was a, a very big event for that. But then it continued over to the next day. And down here we had tornadoes over the North Waco area as well as uh, over here just north of Livingston. Besides that though, a, a decent amount of flooding and all that with it. But if we come up here to Oklahoma, Oklahoma was hit very hard. We had a tornado go through Norman, Oklahoma. Uh, multiple tornadoes. Uh, I think three or four went through some of the same cities uh, over here, down here towards Sulphur, Sulphur Ardmore, uh, as well as that we had a bunch of these tornado reports, uh, just generalized area just to the south uh, east of Tulsa, Oklahoma. And once again, more of a violent tornado southeast Kansas, just to the northeast of uh, Arkansas City. Very damaging outbreak, very deadly outbreak. So far, five people are confirmed dead, hundreds injured. Uh, it was not fun to be monitoring at all. And a public post issued by the Doppler on Wheels showed preliminary wind uh, summary of from the tornado east of Omaha. This was the uh, Harlan, Harlan, Iowa tornado. They measured wind speeds of 224 miles an hour. And that is honestly, for the most part, pretty pretty, pretty cool uh, to see. Uh, not only are we able to study, re do a lot of research on this to kind of see how this played out, uh, how this looked on radar and all that for future references, but it didn't hit that many structures. So likely the EF5 wind speeds, it likely won't be rated EF5 just due to the fact that it didn't hit many structures. Uh, the EF scale is based off damage that these tornadoes do, and the fact that this did not hit many structures uh, is a miracle from God in its own self. And while the tornado outbreak that we were looking at is over, the event that we're seeing uh, as we start moving into May uh, over the impacted areas will continue to happen. Today, uh, we have an enhanced risk of severe weather through portions uh, of Kansas into Iowa, Nebraska, and northwest Missouri. Uh, and this tornado threat, thankfully, is not supposed to be as big. Uh, this is a 5% uh, for the, the most of the enhanced and the slight 2% stretching down further through portions of uh, of that southern slight area wind is a 15 percent significant we'll see a possibility of wind gusts in excess of 65 knots or greater wind threat is a 30 percent uh, as well as that hatch risk possibility to see uh one to two inch hail in diameter or larger if we sc scroll down here the greatest threat for severe weather large hail severe gusts and a few tornadoes possible is from western and central iowa into northeastern kansas and if you want to you can pause to read the hypnosis it, this one is very large and now i'm not saying at all you need to be scared but with the way that we've seen the the weather go for the past few days i do very much want to stress be weather aware just in case uh the a tornado outbreak that we've seen in the iowa area was an enhanced risk as well of course we did have that 10 percent hatched tornado area uh, but that's just me saying just in case something were to happen make sure you have a way to receive alerts stay safe out there 
And tomorrow we will continue with the severe risk. National Weather Service has highlighted an enhanced risk of severe weather in North Oklahoma, uh, extreme southern Nebraska, and into portions of Maine, central Kansas. A slight risk stretching all the way down through the panhandle into Texas. The tornado threat, once again, for this is not expected to be big, but we need to be on alert just in case anything were to happen. Uh, don't do trust the polygon just in case something does uh, touch down or something uh, does go warned. Uh, wind threat for this, 15%, once again, sig uh, significant for that northern area, as well as that hail for that northern area. We have possibility to see two-inch hail uh, in diameter or larger. Uh, and if we scroll down here, scattered severe thunderstorms will be possible across central southern plains on Wednesday. A few tornadoes, including potential for a strong tornado, very large hail and damaging winds are expected. I would not be surprised if this gets upgraded to a 10% hatched risk just for uh, the National Weather Service highlighting a potential for a strong tornado. But they're continue to iron things out just to make sure that they don't get a risk wrong. Uh, and you can pause to read the hypnosis here. Once again, this one is fairly long. And then on Thursday, things do seem to calm down a little bit. Marginal risk stretching from anywhere from portions of Wisconsin down to Texas. Probabilistic of this being severe is a 5%, so not very high of a threat. Scattered strong to severe storms will be possible Thursday from the parts of the upper Mississippi Valley into the southern plains. And if you want to read the hypnosis, you can do so. Now, for the day four, National Weather Service is highlighting a possibility of severe weather, but they are not... Uh, highlighted uh, as too wild of a severe storm just for the fact that there there isn't much really going on but day four through eight all probability slash predictability too low for the first time in a while we don't have anything on this board uh, so that is good to see uh, so we just got to get through the severe weather that we're expected we could possibly see a calming period if nothing does spark up now, as we're looking at the radar, we do have a little bit of morning convection here. And as we've talked before, morning convection can do a pretty decent job at limiting that uh, morning that that the severe potential later in the afternoon uh, eventually that's going to move off though severe storms are, will be expected to spark about three four this is eastern standard time so we do not have much time for there to be uh kind of like that the, that cloud cover broken uh for there to be that more heating of the day type deal uh, although we do have a few hours of it there so so we could see some severe potential uh likely though this won't be as big of an event as we've been seeing the past few days which is good but by four or five o'clock is when that severe potential is really supposed to kick off north of omaha uh six seven these things start organizing uh and then eight nine and ten uh these things get uh pretty cool uh we do have multiple areas uh that could be somewhat discreet uh through like south kansas city south of wichita um and uh, east of Des Moines, which could help a with a little bit of that tornado potential. But eventually, as this just continues to move off through the night by 12, 1 o'clock in the morning, this will die off for the most part. The, and the main concern uh, as we continue off through the nighttime is this Oklahoma uh, slash Kansas area because this does not seem like it's dying off as fast as that north area is as you can see if we run the runs back uh, This starts firing off about 8 9 Eastern Standard Time and we can see that it just continues its potential over the next uh, few hours even at 4 5 in the morning north uh, Tulsa This is still pretty discreet uh, still pretty strong uh, so we will continue to watch uh, as this system develops if anything happens Post will be issued on my Twitter, so make sure to go follow. That link is in the description. Now, tomorrow is April 1st, so happy April uh, to April for May 1st. So happy May to everybody out there. Uh, but as we as we continue through uh, into 8 and 9 o'clock in the morning tomorrow, uh, more storms are expected to fire off towards Wichita. Uh, this could likely be severe, uh, somewhat severe as it continues to move through. By noon, 1, 2, 3 o'clock, this is still Eastern Standard Time. Uh, a lot of that rain, and this could have a couple bounds of severity in this, but this is likely going to be a good storm that can help limit, once again, more of that severe potential uh, through the Oklahoma area. That main threat is going to be towards the Kansas area, though, so where we're seeing this morning convection is where we're seeing that marginal risk of severe weather. Uh, eventually, though, about 9, 10, these storms will start firing off in the Oklahoma area. We'll move through uh, that portion 
uh, as well as that is we continue uh, through uh, some storms uh, firing off about four in the morning towards the Kansas risk. Uh, not expected to be too wild, uh, but that is what we're expecting. By six in the morning, we move into the day three marginal risk uh, as we do have this broken line of storms anywhere down from Texas uh, up into portions of uh, that Wisconsin risk uh, for there to be some of that severe potential. So thank you guys so much for watching. For live updates, make sure to go follow my Twitter. Link in the description. Uh, stay safe out there. Make sure you have a way to receive alerts. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a great day.